Hello everyone, Rod Sager here with the Photo Fair. We're going to do another little video on uh, a 6x6 folder. You may recall uh, some time ago I did one on the Mamiya 6, which is one of my favorite sort of classic uh, vintage folding cameras. This one is kind of an iconic camera. This is the Zeiss Super Iconta. Um, this is a late model. It's the 532-16. Uh, one might think the slash 16 is for 16 shots 645. It is not. Honestly, I don't know what the 16 is all about. This will shoot 12 shots on a roll of 120, giving you a 6x6 six six square. I like the square because when you shoot this camera, you're always holding the camera the same way. You sort of got to pay attention to your relative uh, edge distance so that uh, if you want to shoot, say, an 8x10 or uh, type of thing, horizontal or vertical, that you leave enough room. Uh, on either side of the square as appropriate or of course you can always shoot full frame square shots but uh, I like the fact that I'm not having to fumble around with this and particularly on these older cameras where the controls are not as ergonomic as some of our modern uh, cameras like some of our DSLRs where your your thumb and your index finger are used to control a lot of the aspects uh, of your shooting uh, they didn't really have that kind of ergonomics uh, back in the 1950s when this was made on this camera we're gonna focus here with this little wheel uh, and that's kind of uh, you know cumbersome when you're turning the camera around uh, the uh, the other thing is is that your uh, your your shutter uh, you really can't shoot this one quite as fast as you can a modern camera. So again, not having to worry about odd finger positions and so on when you're turning the camera into a vertical position is great. That's why I like the 6x6. Other people are going to say, no, we want the bigger piece of film like a 6x7 or a 6x9. They did make a lot of 6x9 versions of these Zeiss icons, which were exceptional cameras. Um, and uh, there are some folders that are 645 as well, which are a little bit smaller. And there's even some cameras that did both 645 and 6x6, including uh, there was a Mia 6 that did that, and I believe there was at least one Zeiss uh, icon, Super Iconta, and maybe more than that uh, as well. So lots of possibilities here. So compared to my Mamiya 6, which is still my favorite old school folder, this is a better built camera. It feels more solid in your hand. Everything is just like really well machined. It's just, it really is a beautiful Leica type quality camera. It's just really, really well put together. Definitely an edge over the Mamiya 6. Now the Mamiya 6 is not a, a poorly built camera by any means, but they definitely didn't pay attention to the subtle craftsmanship details that Zeiss did with this camera right here. Um, so that's great. A uh, couple of downfalls to this versus, say, for example, the aforementioned Mamiya 6 is the focus. I've never liked the focus wheel. It's way out here on the front here, and it's always stiff. This one was recently uh, worked over by a, a classic camera tech, and it's smoother than it was. I am moving it, but it, it literally, like kind of tears at your flesh a little bit on the with this steel knurly wheel and it's just kind of an uncomfortable position uh, to focus uh, versus the Mamiya 6 which is back here um, in a minor subtle thing uh, this Super Iconta right here is really cool because it's got a super bright viewfinder and there's no way for me to really show you that on the video but it's amazingly bright and I really like that because a lot of them are fogged up and and, and so on. The uh, rangefinder on the camera is really, really bright, easy to use. Uh, you can really see the two images come together. Um, the rangefinder on this is a little funky as well, though, kind of projecting through this little bit in the front here from the actual coupling devices that are back here, the two dual windows. So, kind of odd. Um, this one has uh, the fully coupled. Uh, when you advance the film, uh, it uh, uh, pre prevents double exposure, locks up the shutter. You do have to cock it. Uh, here it doesn't actually cock the shutter for you so there's a two-step thing advance the film cock the shutter then you fire uh, so kind of nice uh, late model uh, super icontas will do that some of the earlier ones will not they don't give you double exposure protection um, this one does so um, uh, definitely if you're going to get one of these and actually shoot with it and not just have it as a collector piece getting the later model uh, has a lot of advantages in just its ease of operation and again getting a multi-coated lens which means I can shoot color film in here and expect to get brilliant uh, results uh, and of course with black and white you're getting lots of contrast not a whole lot of, of uh, flare 
uh, and that's always kind of nice because those are hard things to correct you know pumping up the contrast that's not so hard to do with Photoshop and so on but uh, you know really bad flare eh, there's not a whole lot you can do about that except suffer so this one's not going to give you too much trouble uh, in that area and I've, I've shot uh, plenty of pictures to this and it is it really does do a great job um, so super uh, super Iconta uh, you're getting really just a beautifully made camera I mean if they built this camera today to this kind of precision and quality uh, you it, it seriously it'd be a three thousand dollar camera maybe even more I mean it is that well made it is just a finely crafted camera um, and uh, that's one of the things I like about these cameras it's just you know it's hard to you know honestly I can't afford to buy every product in my life built to this kind of standard I mean I'd be in a I'd be living under a bridge with lots of nice stuff I mean these things are just they're beautifully made there's nary a piece of plastic anywhere on this camera everything is metal uh, except for the bellows uh, and speaking of the bellows this one uh, I don't know if that's the original bellows or not, but this camera's 60 years old and that bellows has no pinholes in it. Uh, pretty impressive. So uh, on this particular camera, you're gonna set your shutter speeds here with this little wheel. Uh, it's a little cumbersome to get your fingers in between these little spots and spin the wheel. Uh, it'll always be stiff going between 250th of a second and 500th of a second because it's literally a spring uh, that you're tightening up to get the extra speed uh, and your lens openings are set with this wheel right back here again not real I mean it's just kind of difficult not difficult but just you kind of got to get your, your finger in a little spot and kind of spin the wheel it's definitely not uh, super fast and precision um, but you know and I use these cameras I mean I take them out sometimes when my wife and I go out and you know walk in the park or go downtown or something I'll take this thing and you know snap you know kind of street photos with it and it's a little slow to operate for those kinds of photos um, but you only get 12 shots so it's not like you're trying to rapid fire succession this thing um, uh, but uh, they're a little cumbersome to use in a way. One of the nice things is is that I, I would imagine that people back in the day when this was a kind of a daily driver type camera is having your index finger getting real good at setting all your settings with the index finger probably setting your shutter speed which is by far the stiffest dial and sort of fixing that so hey it's a sunny day today we're going to shoot it 250 or 500 uh, and then having your focus here and then a quick spin of this aperture dial here uh, you can't see it it's totally uncoupled in the viewfinder so you don't know what speed and lens opening you're at uh, when you're looking through the cameras but you know somebody that's used the camera for a long time would probably get a pretty good idea where they were at so that's kind of the deal there camera folds up real nice and small uh, you'll see tiny little package fits right in my hand a little bigger than my hand uh, but these things are great um, I highly recommend shooting folding cameras I love them uh, anybody who follows my blog on a regular basis knows that I'm a nut for these things um, and this is just a great choice you can pick these up uh, anywhere from under a hundred bucks for one that's kind of rough up to well over a thousand bucks for ones that are kind of rare and collectible or just excessively mint uh, so shop it good uh, you'll find these things at photo fair we got one coming up on November 18th so just a few weeks from now in Newark at the Newark pavilion uh, you can go to photofair.com check out all of our show dates and the show dates for other shows around the West Coast as well uh, and uh, of course you can look on eBay and other places like that as well so Super Iconta uh, with Zeiss lens fantastic uh, a top choice for vintage folding 6x6 camera we'll see you next time